Hi guys, you are welcome once again to the Smart Way Lectures on the Science Ambassador series. This is a series of lectures we are running on all the areas in science. And today we are here with you to continue on chemistry. In our last lecture, we looked at the concept of thermochemistry. We said that when we say thermochemistry, chemistry, it is the study of the heat changes or the heat that is accompanied by chemical and physical reactions okay now we said that the energy that it change some of them are very notable some of them too are not notable some of them are very obvious in such a way that sometimes when you stand by the reaction when you stand by the reaction it you have to go back because the burn is in such a way that the reaction is taking place in such a way that a huge amount of heat is given to the surrounding so you have to go back okay some of them too you not even notice them for example when you pour salt in water it is a process that involves breaking down of the salt in the water. But even when you put thermometer inside or you put your hand inside, nothing what will happen to you. You will not feel whether it is cold or you will not feel whether it is hot. And so some energies are very silent. So we are able to look at the types of chemical reactions in terms of energy changes. And we said these reactions we normally call thermochemical reactions. We've divided it into two. We said we have what to call the exothermic reaction. Exo means outside and it is reaction that evolve or liberate heat to the surrounding and we also have a reaction that take up energy into the system that is endothermic reaction endo means inside so it takes up or absorb energy into the reaction we gave you some example today we are going to look at the practical way by which we can determine this reaction what we are talking about is not abstract we can practically determine and measure it directly so how do we do that the branch of science that study the practical measurement the practical way by which energy is measured is called thermochemistry so thermochemistry is a branch of science that deals with the practical determination of what energy okay evolved in a reaction or accompanied in a reaction we understand that it is the what the branch of science that deals with practical determination of what of energy that is accompanied in reaction so that's what called thermochemistry and we are going to look at that so we said that calorimetry is all about practical determination of okay that is a practical determination or measurement practical what determination practical determination okay of what of energy practical determination of energy or measurement of energy in what in chemical and physical reaction in chemical and what and physical reactions And physical reaction so that's what we call thermochemistry the practical way of determining it the practical way of measuring the heat or the energy in chemical and physical what reaction now this is not done by mere talk it is done through an instrument and the name of the instrument is what we call the calorimeter the instrument that we use that is what we call calorimeter so the instrument we use is what car low so we use calorimeter as an instrument to determine that and examples that we often use examples that we often use we have what to call the copper calorimeter we have what to call the what the copper calorimeter we have the copper calorimeter That is, these are some examples of the instrument copper calorimeter. We have what to call the we have what to call the coffee cup calorimeter. Okay, the coffee. That is the styrofoam uh, cup. Okay, that is our takeaway cups. Okay, uh, the the coffee what cup calorimeter. This is a simple one. Most of most of in that is what 
uh, we use in a laboratory uh, in, uh, uh, in in schools. Okay, just a very simple way. It's it's, it's usually they call the styrofoam. Okay, so these are examples. Okay, now how do they look like? Very simple. We look like, like when you take a, a, a typical copper cap carometer. Okay, this is how it look like. I'll show you the image, and you you see them. But let me just give a, a simple sketch. It looks like that, like this, there, like this. So the, this can is copper. This can is copper. Okay, and then we have also another smaller copper inside, which is placed inside. There is also another smaller copper, which is also placed inside. So this is also copper. Okay, so we have two copper can. Okay, and in between that we have, in between them we have uh, cotton, or it is lagged. In between them we have cotton, or something that we use to lag it. Okay, in between them it is some we use something to lag it inside, and so you can see that the solutions are usually inside. The solution will be usually inside here so the solution will be here the solution will be here okay and so and here we had a small hole here and then the tomato is inserted into the hole and placed into the what into the solution so this is the thermometer so we have what's called the thermometer here thermometer we have the thermometer. So this this is the copper cap uh, parameter. So uh, the solution is, is done, and uh, you you first measure what is inside first before you pour uh, whatever you want to pour inside, and then you measure it again, and then you do some mathematics, which we'll be doing very very soon. So this is how the copper cap parameter is, and so this is how it is used to measure temperature. Okay, will rise. The temperature will rise if it give out heat, but temperature will fall if what the reaction or the solution take up heat from the surrounding. And so we use that trick to do that. Now the mathematics involved is very important. And so to do the mathematics, I'm going to talk about. Uh, we have to know how this, uh, how we do the calculations. Okay. First of all, what we do is that we pour one of the solution here. So so the acid will be poured inside. So the acid will be poured inside, and then we will call the what the temperature. We put the, the thermometer inside. And then we we'll call the the the, the, temp, the initial temperature. Okay, the acid will be inside. You pour the acid inside, and then you we'll call the initial temperature. And then you bring in what the base. You bring in the base. Okay, so you pour the base inside. You then bring in the base into the system. You pour another solution. That is the base. So the base will come out. So the base will what the base here will come inside as a second one, and then that one too. When it enters, you then record the what the final temperature. So this is the base that is going inside. After, yes, the, the base that is going inside. So the base will go inside. Go the base will go inside. And so when the base go into contact with the what with the acid, quickly what happen? The thermometer begin to read the uh, energy. Okay, the thermometer begin to read the energy, and then there will be a change in what in temperature. And that change in temperature is now used to do our calculation. The, remember the change in temperature measure the temperature measure the degree of what of heat have you gotten that uh -huh. so the degree of hotness or coldness of a body so with that degree we can know the energy that is either in, uh, liberated giving out or taken into the reaction so basically that's what we do first acid is added temperature is recorded alone without anything added and then the other substance is added like the base is added and then when they come into contact you call the new temperature the subtraction is made so the calculation how do we do the calculation the with the calculation we use what to call the specific we use what to call something like the specific capacity specific specific word heat capacity so we are going to learn capacity we are going to know some specific capacity and how to do that specific heat capacity capacity we are going to know the specific capacity now usually most reactions okay 
most reactions takes place in water and so we have to at least the solvent for the reaction is water and so by knowing the some some specific heat that some volume of water can take we can be able to estimate whatever is happening the energy is in the reaction so mathematically when you say specific heat capacity what it means is that it is the quantity of heat the quantity of heat okay that is quantity of heat quantity of what of heat or energy quantity of heat or energy that is needed to raise as that's needed to raise one kilogram mass of one kilogram mass of a substance if it is water one kilogram mass of a substance if it is water or if it is a solution okay through a temperature of one kelvin through a temperature of one kelvin through a change in temperature of one kelvin through a change in temperature of what of one kelvin so that is what we mean by specific heat capacity and so what it means is that if we know one kilogram mass of water if we know one kilogram mass of water we can do our calculations because once we know that one kilogram mass of water need this specific heat capacity then whatever mass you take you do some calculations and you do that it is not only water we can also use we can also find one kilogram mass of the solution and then we will find the amount of heat that is needed to raise the temperature so in mathematics the quantity of heat that we want from the reaction that is either liberated so the quantity of heat of heat that is either liberated or absorbed in the reaction mathematically is proportional to the specific heat capacity the specific heat what capacity heat capacity times the mass this one the mass this one is the mass so let's say m kilogram measure measures mass and then we have what to call the what the change in what temperature okay the change in what in temperature and by symbol what it mean is that we have q by symbol what it mean that we have q that is the quantity of heat okay and then the specific heat capacity times the mass times the what times the change in what in temperature okay times the change in temperature so if you want to find the amount of heat the heat of a reaction either absorbed or liberated that is either gain or or what or either gain either gain or loss is is the same as this so for example the heat gain okay the q the quantity of heat heat gain so if the reaction is endothermic reaction that is it will gain energy so the heat gain okay of a particular reaction is the same as what heat what heat loss same as heat what loss and all this is the same as what the specific capacity of whatever solution times the mass of the what whatever solution and times the what the change in what in that this the same formula is used to calculate either the heat what loss or heat gain you just have to know the substances that what that absorb or or or, or lost the heat and then you you you'll be able to what understand i'll give you a typical example here but when we say specific capacity it is the quantity of heat needed to raise one kilogram mass of a body through a temperature of one kelvin and by mathematics you can find the quantity of heat okay that is liberated or absorbed into the reaction okay this parameter will record some change in temperature the heat will either come out or go inside the reaction this is the mathematics this is the formula so to find the q of the quantity of heat from the reaction you multiply this one times this times that and then you get the specific capacity times this times that times that and so you get this now this heat can be taken as i said or can be gained and the whole mathematics is that 
so let me take a, a typical example like this so that we, we we use it to understand let me let's take a typical example like this now suppose i pour hot water in the calorimeter Suppose I pour about say I pour about what one kilogram one kilogram mass of hot water of hot water hot water in a in in this one i pour hot one inside okay and i, I lag it nothing is coming out let me put the lag material so you have this one so this is the lag lagged one inside there suppose i pour one kilogram mass of hot water okay one kilogram mass of hot water there what will happen the mass the hot water will lose energy so i can't use them that my, my thermometer to what to take the reading can I use my thermometer to take the reading okay so can I use my thermometer to take the reading here okay i can use that my thermometer to take the reading okay so So this is my thermometer. So I can use my thermometer here. Okay. Thermometer. So I can use my thermometer to take the reading. Now it means that for for what the quantity of heat that it will lose, the quantity of heat that it will, the hot water will lose will be gained by the what? By the copper. Okay. The, the hot water is going to lose it. Remember I poured hot water inside and the only thing inside is hot water and whatever okay is around is what is going to gain the heat so what happened what basically happened is that water is going to lose the heat water here is going to lose the heat the hot water is going to lose the heat the hot water okay Is going to lose the heat and then the container this container that's the copper container will, will gain the heat so the this what hot water will lose the heat and then the copper will gain the what the heat so the copper can the copper can that is surrounding the what the hot water will gain the heat copper okay gain the what the heat have you gotten that so in in that case the heat loss okay the heat loss by the hot water the heat loss by the hot water is equal to what the heat gained by the what by the by the copper by the copper can okay because remember the copper can is what is surrounding it and if you put hot water it's just like putting hot water in a bucket have you gotten that? And you close it such such a way that no heat come out. Have you gotten that? You close it such a way that no heat come out. So what happened is that the hot water is going to lose heat and to the what? To the container. The hot water is going to lose heat to the container. Have you gotten that? The hot water is going to if you are to if you are to lock everywhere so that nothing comes out. If you pour hot water inside, the hot water is going to lose what heat to the what can. Okay, until what every the, the, the hot water cools down. Have you gotten that? So the heat that will be lost from the hot water, okay, and 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 will be gained by by the can is 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 the same. So if you want to find the quantity of heat, that's as I said. If you want to find the quantity of heat, all you need just need to do is to what multiply the specific the specific capacity of water, okay, the specific capacity of water times the mass of the water you took, times the change in temperature, okay, times the change in temperature. Time the change in what 
in temperature okay times the change in temperature then you look at the also the specific capacity of the what of the copper have you gotten that times the mass of the copper so this one you have to remove it anyway this one these are two can we can remove them each of them you can remove them so you can remove this one and weigh them so you have the you can also weigh the mass of the copper and then you multiply it times the what times the heat change have you gotten that so whatever the copper and uh, whatever the water will lose is whatever the can will gain if you are to what make sure that no heat is what is coming out from anywhere have you gotten that so basically that is what we do uh, we have been able chemists have been able to calculate for the exact okay the exact amount of heat that will come out from one kilogram mass of water okay one kilogram mass of water through a change in one kelvin temperature okay we have been able to do that and the value of the heat that we have been able to calculate for for the water okay for the water the specific capacity of the water that is the heat that is required to change one kilogram mass of this water okay that is to or to raise this this mass of the water the heat that will to go out we have been able to we have been able to calculate for the heat okay that is needed to raise one kilogram mass of water or the one kilogram mass of water will lose through a temperature of what one kelvin and that heat the value of the heat is what is four okay one eight zero four one eight zero joules have you gotten that four one eight zero joules this is what we have been able to what to what to do we have been able to do that and you can also do it in what in kilograms by dividing by thousand i'm going to get 4.18 watt zero watt kilowatt kilojoules have you gotten that so if you want to do it in kilojoules then that is if you want to do it raw that is it so we have been able to find for the heat that is needed to raise one kilogram mass of water through a temperature of one kelvin and this is the value that we have used now it is very important we do for water because most chemical reactions takes place in water most chemical reactions take place in water so once we know that we want to know specific heat for water that is specific heat for water heat for a specific mass of water then we can be able to estimate almost all what uh what uh, energies in what in in chemical reactions so this is what we have what have done now again in summary i said that calorimetry is a practical determination of heat change in chemical and what physical reaction i said that the instrument that it, it uses is what is calorimeter examples are coffee cup calorimeter and what copper cup calorimeter and this is how it look like the, the, this copper cup calorimeter is made up of two copper can one smaller inside and one outside okay the smaller one can be removed and within the smaller one and the bigger one there is what you call a cotton or it is lacked to prevent what heat that will come out from the system that is to prevent excessive loss of heat so that we don't want this this one to either feel hot or hot or cold it should be the same at every point in time good and it is used to what to to take the measurement the procedures you can follow we said that to be able to find the heat that is evolved or calculate um the heat that is either gain or loss in the copper can you you use what you call the mathematics called the the, what, the specific heat capacity when you say specific capacity it is the heat required to change the specific a specific mass of what of of water that is one kilogram mass of water through a temperature of one kelvin and to do that thing uh you have to just multiply the specific capacity times the mass that is one kilogram times the what times the change in temperature and so the heat okay the heat of a reaction is this one the heat of a reaction is this multiply the specific capacity times this times this and you will get the answer this heat can either be gained or lost in chemical reaction and i did a, a good example of that now when you pour hot water in when you pour hot water in a copper cup calorimeter and the hot water is the mass of one kilogram okay what basically happened at the hot water will gradually lose heat to the what to the the smaller can that is the can outside house around it have we gotten that so the heat that the copper can will what will lose will be proportional to the heat and uh, the heat that the, the hot water will lose to the copper can will be proportional to the heat that the copper can will gain and that if you want to find the mathematics if you want to get the heat gain or loss then you have to use this formula so you just have to find for the specific you the value the value of the specific heat capacity will be given to you 
of the water and of the can will be given to you and you will be there asked to find the mass or temperature change or whatever and then you do the mathematics we have been able to find for the value for the specific capacity of what of we have been able to find for the specific capacity of water okay and for the water it is it is what 4180 uh, kelvin that is the heat that required to 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 change what one kilogram mass of body through a temperature of what one kelvin this and this we have been able to what to find i'll give you the copper um later so that's what we have done we'll end the lesson here and in our next episode we'll begin to take some questions and then we'll begin to what to solve them and uh, better understand how we practically uh, determine energy in chemical and physical reaction thank you Maybe today I don't get nothing, but tomorrow I go get something. And I go buy the motor for my mouth. But if anyone worry me, I go show.